Hi, it's Friday, the 18th of September, and I am continuing to read and wonder about the book of Acts, the sequel to Luke's gospel, uh, in which the early church figures out who it is and what it does, and it deals with bringing together traditional Jews and Gentiles into community, dealing with those from the outside who feel that they are a threat either to religious authority or civil authority. Um, led by the Spirit, um, we, we follow the stories of, of Peter and James and the elders, but primarily Paul, who begins the book of Acts as Saul, one a Pharisee who is, who is arresting Christians, uh, but having um, an experience of the risen Christ on the road to Damascus, Paul, Saul, turns 180 degrees, is renamed as Paul, uh, and, uh, and pretty much the book of Acts then focuses on him uh, as he preaches the gospel and b- brings people into faith, as he is um, falsely accused, as he's arrested, he's imprisoned, he's freed, um, he's stoned, all sorts of things happen to Paul. He does miracles, he teaches, it's, it's quite the story. Uh, at this point, um, after his time uh, in, uh, in sort of the Asian part of the empire, um, Antioch, um, around the Mediterranean, um, Paul found, uh, came down to Jerusalem, was uh, arrested, uh, again trumped up charges, but having revealed that he's a Roman citizen, he's offered a certain amount of protection uh, and so he is held under house arrest for over two years in Caesarea. He testifies before the tribune. He testifies before the governor. He testifies before King Agrippa. Uh, all of this to get him ultimately to, to Rome. Um, he had an early vision during his imprisonment saying that what he, what he testified to in Jerusalem, he must witness in Rome. So he has the sense that he will get to Rome, he will get before the emperor, and he will tell his story. Now, all along, the authorities have said, there's nothing here. The charges do not warrant imprisonment or death. Um, but <laughs> he, he has um, resisted um, the opportunity to, to be freed. He, he stays... In house arrest, it, it, there are certain comforts. Uh, people are allowed to help him. He's allowed visitors. He's allowed to get out and visit occasionally. So um, it's more of a protective custody. But anyway, all of that um, aside, he's on his way to, to Rome um, ra- on a rather circuitous um, uh, journey over water. Uh, and they, did, they have not found a place to winter. Uh, bad winds, storms. Um, the ship is somewhat adrift. Um, lots of passengers, people afraid. Uh, Paul has recently, as, as, as in yesterday I read um, earlier in this chapter, Paul has told them all that they will be fine, that in fact they will have to ground their ship, but he's been assured by God that everybody is going to survive. So he has done that, and that's kind of where we pick it up now. More of this exciting adventure. Um, And then I'll wonder, and we'll see what happens when we wonder. So it's chapter 27, verses 27 through 44. When the fourteenth night had come, as they were drifting across the Sea of Adria, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land. So they took soundings and found twenty fathoms. A little farther on they took soundings again and found fifteen fathoms. Fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. But when the sailors tried to escape from the ship and had lowered the boat onto the sea on the pretext of putting out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. So then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the boat and set it adrift. Just before daybreak, Paul urged all of them to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take some food, for it will help you survive, for none of you will lose a hair from your heads. After he had said this, he took bread, and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. And then all of them were encouraged and took food for themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning they did not recognize the land. But they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. 
the same time they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars, then hoisted the foresail to the wind they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground, and the bows stuck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken off by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape, but the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for land, and the rest to follow, some on planks and others on pieces of that ship. And so it was that they were all brought safely to land. So, there we go. Quite an adventure story, isn't it? Um, Luke tells a good story, and uh, he, he, he tells it as a witness. Um, so we assume that the author of, of the book of Acts, who we call Luke, because it's the same, same author as the Luke's gospel, um, we assume he's witnessing all these things, that he's with Paul on this journey. Um, so he knows some of what went on. I have some unanswered questions. I'm not quite sure why they waited so long to eat. I'm not sure of a number of things, but, um, but they are in peril. That much I, I get, and it's, and it's wonderfully told. I'm not quite sure what it is I'm wondering about at this point, however. It's an adventure story, isn't it? I mean, it's it's an adventure story. Um, so so what's going on in this? And, and you know, uh, the point of wondering is to engage with the story in such a way that it reflects on, on, on your life, on my life, in this moment, wherever we are. For me, that's how the Word of God is revealed, in the engagement with the story. Uh, ideally in community, if I can talk to somebody else and hear what they think as we as we speak to each other, we discover things we hadn't thought about before. So I'm wondering, what is it about this story that speaks to me in 2020? Speaks to me sitting right now in my home office where I produce virtual services for my church and I do pastoral care over the phone and occasionally get to see people. Where, where is this? What, what What's the wonder in this for me? Well, Paul, Paul is on his way um, to Rome. That's, that's what he's supposed to do. That, that's, that's his goal. But along the way, other things happen. Along the way, uh, he gets caught up in, in storms. Along the way, um, the ship is being, well, he gets shipwrecked. So they're all on a ship and they're starving. They will crash. They will get ashore. Paul's mission, Paul's job is happening in Rome. So I wonder if, if, if this isn't part of, uh, of Luke's way of telling us that it is important for us to live our faith out always, in, in all situations, even, even when it doesn't seem to be the thing that we're meant to do. For me personally, I know how to live out my faith in church. I stand up, I wear a great big blue dress. Um, I know how to deal with people who come to me in need or concern or hurt or pain or, or, or whatever they come. They come to me at church. I know, I know how to be a minister. I got it. But what happens when I am blown off track? What happens then? What happens when a pandemic comes and changes all of my plans and all the ways that I do things? What happens if I am shipwrecked? What happens... What happens if I'm in a grocery store having a bad day? I'm not being a minister. I'm not being particularly faithful. It's just that I just dropped all the eggs on the ground and they cracked and I am so upset and I'm ticked off at myself and I'm embarrassed and I got to come clean them up and I, I... Well, in the midst of this, Paul doesn't just keep to himself waiting for his big moment in Rome. Right? Paul sees um, a, a lack of leadership and, 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 a, and a, um, a crash of morale on this ship. And so he speaks to that. He shares, he exercises and shares his faith with those who are afraid that they're never going to find land. Um, he exercises his faith and his leadership when he tells them, well, then it's time to eat. And then he actually does what you and I would recognize very much as, as, as a communion. Right after this, it says he took the bread, giving thanks to God in the presence of all. He broke it and began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged and took food for themselves. Doesn't that sound a little communion-like? Um, 
and there were 276 persons in the ship. How much bread did they have? I, I mean, this might be Luke uh, reminding us of, of, of Jesus by, by framing Paul in the same way. So Paul's story very much follows the Jesus story, just, just not in capital letters, perhaps. Smaller numbers, more subtle. But for me, it's also a reminder for me to live out my faith I'm still Christian even when I don't want to be. I'm still Christian even when I'm not in my pulpit. I'm still faithful even when I am blown off course and find myself in, in circumstances that I never imagined. Sometimes for me, when, when, when things change and things get hard, there's the part of me that just sort of wants to shut down. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll wait for my moment. Um, if you're my age, you might understand. I'll just, I'll just rope a dope for a while. I'll just, I'll just rope a dope and just wait and wait and wait for my moment. Um, Muhammad Ali reference. Uh, but, but what I hear Luke telling me in this, by the way he frames the story with Paul and images of Jesus, um, no, I'm supposed to live my faith in the midst of shipwreck, in the midst of being blown off course. Um, yeah, I might be trained for a certain moment in time, a certain place, a certain way, but my faith is not about my training. It's about my trust in God. It's about my experience of God. And so I can share that, even though that may not be my specific training. I can take the bread, I can break it, I can give thanks, I can share it. And I think... What's implied here is that when we do that, incredible things can happen. 276 persons on the ship were fed. I don't know you, but that sounds to me like a, like a, like a miracle. They satisfied their hunger. And, and, and then the story goes on. So they they, 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 they they crash the ship, they do their best they can, but they can't get it to they can't ground it on shore. Um, and Paul's privilege kicks in at this point because all the prisoners were going to be killed, but the centurion can't let let Paul be killed. He's a he's a citizen. He may be a prisoner, but he's a Roman citizen. And so no no no. He he talks them all out of of, 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 of talks them out of killing the, the prisoners altogether. And so then the prisoners are, are allowed to 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 escape, as it were, to if they can swim to jump into the water and if they can't swim then to to go next and and float in on on whatever they can find to float on um, planks bits of the ship whatever they can and it says that everybody is brought safely to land in a sense paul is living out his faith i get it there's another sense too that just paul's presence the fact that paul is there is the reason that we don't kill all the prisoners and yes, this can be about Roman privilege, we'll call it. Um, but it also just might be sometimes when we're present, things happen just because we're there. We, we didn't mean them to happen, um, but they can happen. So, so we needn't shy away from the difficult times. Our being there, our participating makes a difference. I have to wonder about that. I have to wonder a little bit about being blown off course and just wanting to shut down till I get to my proper place, the place that I'm trained in. Um, but living out my faith anyway and recognizing that even when I'm not sure what to do, just my being there can make a difference. I wonder if that's what Luke wants me to understand. I wonder if that's what God's inspiring in me right now. I don't know. It is a lovely adventure story. It's great. But I think there might be something more in this for me. I hope there is for you. I'm going to stop wondering right now and offer a prayer. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this time to reflect and to wonder. God, let us never 
be afraid to live faithfully even when we are blown off course, even when we find ourselves in circumstances we never imagined. Even when we find ourselves in places where our skills are of no use, let us, let us not forget that our faith is not a skill. It is trust. It is community. And so let us share our faith, knowing that as we do, remarkable things can happen. And knowing that as we are simply present, we can make a difference. We needn't be afraid. God be with us, on course and off course, living faithfully and wondering if we make a difference at all. Be with us. Remind us that we are not alone. And that what we do, how we do it, matters. We pray through the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And with that, friends, I will wish you a great weekend. Uh, my son's getting married tomorrow, so I intend to be celebrating that. Um, but we'll check in with you on Monday, and we're almost to the end of Acts. And after that, I'm going to move into John's Gospel, I think. But uh, let's uh, let's wrap this story up. Let's let's get Paul to Rome. Spoiler alert: He will get there. Um, but uh, until we check in, God bless you. Please know that you're not alone. Please know that you that you matter, not just for what you do, but just for who you are. You matter. We'll see you Monday.